Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Lawrence Lowe, the Vice President of Engineering at Jasper Design Automation. Lawrence, security is a very large and broad issue. What are you seeing that's changing? So security today involves the whole stack of um, hierarchies. It started from the hardware, which itself has changed a lot in the nature of it. From early days, there are many single devices operating to an SOC that incorporates many, many IPs that need to work very well together, especially in order to preserve the security uh, um, and integrity of this information. Then moving away from hardware, the system integration and um, the firmware also play a very critical role of how to you know, set the um, design into the proper mode to access security. And finally, in the actual user application, where um, many applications need to go through, access personal data that maybe go through internet, go through store locally or remotely. So all this ecosystem make up the security problem today, which is very different than what it used to be. Can you draw this out for us? What are we looking at in terms of access points and threats to an SOC? In the simplest form, let's look at three layers here. Here is my application, application software. It's where you know, most people see how information are being transferred, they are being go, go through the right medium. So that's where hackers target you know, in try to uh, crack the encryption algorithm or try to get information from. But before that, there is a firmware layer Firmware layer X um, serve as the bridge between the application software and the hardware itself. So that itself has a lot of um, um, play a big role in the security as well, which you know we can go through it later. But one of the key things is that all these security are making a one fundamental assumption is that your hardware itself, which is at the foundation, um, is secure. So because you know, application talking about encryption algorithm, how do you protect the data? But what if the hardware itself um, has a flaw where information can be uh, <coughs> obtained through improper channel in the hardware ports? Then it compromises the whole stack of things from application of firmware will get compromised because a lot of um, information that should not be at the um, hand of the users are now available. So, there are many uh, people are targeting different areas because they are all necessary to make the overall security uh, problem contained. When you're looking at the hardware, where are you seeing the, the vulnerabilities? So hardware, the major vulnerability today is not as much as individual component that is not able to keep the data secure. Because if I have, I'm, I'm designing the processor, you know, there are many ways to keep the secure data in an area that can only be accessed when it's supposed to. Now, let's try integrate um, three pieces of big IPs together. Maybe I have a um, CPU subsystem, I have a graphic subsystem, I have a memory subsystem. So let's look at the secure path. Maybe the actual content is in the memory, but the control is by the processor. So the processor needs to set a certain mode where data can be accessed through the memory subsystem into the, onto the memory. At the same time, for performance reason, there's a sideband communication between the um, graphic subsystem and the processor subsystem. After everything is integrated together, a test system may come up. Maybe there's a scan chain being inc included. There's a memory base included. When individual piece is doing its work, combine everything with all the paths that's coming along, it's very, very easy to create an un, uh, unintended path that can access the data from the memory in the secure area through somewhere that is not intended. So that's the major vulnerability is that how does all the pieces still preserve the security in the context of SOC? So you've got a billion transistors, you've got multiple levels of IP, you've got IP coming from internal, external, you've got many ways of communicating in and out of the chip. How do you secure all this stuff? So in theory, there is only a very limited path where the um, information can be accessed. 
but in practice, that's not the case. Therefore, everybody need to play the role. First, individual IP provider need to explain when and how can secure data being uh, <coughs> accessed. Then the system architecture now play a big role. Traditionally, system architecture is mostly thinking about performance, but security is a very, very vital part of system architecture to identify how can I contain the secure data and how can I effectively block any, ex any other access. So it's no longer about you know, putting everything together, but it's also an explicit mechanism to block security data to come in. So that's where the tricky part comes from. Have I thought of every single possible way of taking data so that I know what path to block? And secondly, is the blocking at the right place where there's no other side paths because the design has so many paths right now. So all these things um, is what uh, being uh, very challenging in the system architecture point of view. So here is a, an example of an, a very sim uh, simplified SOC where you can see that the, the, this is a CPU subsystem where the processor are. It's where, probably where the majority of the firmware and software is, um, is talking to. This is where you control how to get the um, access to the secure information or not. So the CPU subsystem is definitely a very important piece of configuring it. Graphic subsystem, mem memory subsystem, peripheral subsystems are the other subsystems that communicate to each other, maybe through a fabric, maybe through a layers of fabric. Peripherals are, and, and the registers and this end are the interface to the outside world. So these are also another important part that I'll uh, talk about in a minute. The last but not least piece is the memory subsystem. Oftentimes, you know, the secure and non-secure information are sharing physical memories, maybe different uh, memory space, but they are shared in physical <laughs> um, location. Memory subsystem oftentimes has the job of making sure that the proper decoding is done such that um, the secure information are stored in the right place. So let me zoom in a little bit on the memory subsystem, probably maybe that it has the generic you know, memory and then in the secure path may have some kind of encryption to the, uh, to the memory path. So, may, so this encryption path sometimes it's the, uh, doing the job of um, you know, encrypting and decrypting the keys. So in this tentative example, maybe the right thing to access to the memory is the boot, during boot sequence, only in the boot, the CPU will set the design into a secure mode and have one particular uh, processor in the processor subsystem, let's say there are many processors. This is the only one that can access the secure information. So from here, it's going to go through the fabric, go through the memory subsystem in this case, go through the encryption block to the memory. This is the access part path, and the return path are similar. Now let's say, because of performance um, configuration, I have a direct communication. Maybe it's because of, because of coherency snooping that I want to make these two blocks coherence that I have another side channel of communication. Then maybe I have another way to doing a test mode. Test mode that can set the registers in the processor instead, instead of going through here. Not, you know, you know, when the whole system put together, there actually exists a way to use the test mode during certain access of, um, between the CPU and GPU that can change the uh, secure mode of the processor. This is hypothetical. Now, I will be able to use this test mode to bypass here and possibly access the memory stored temporarily here. And, when it, and during the same test mode, maybe uh, scan chain, now I'm inserting scan chain, and take those information out to the, to the scan out. So what we're running into here is a difference of, it's no longer just these software guys out of school that are doing the hacking. We're now talking about electrical engineers that potentially can understand every piece of the chip, understand how the software works with it, and come in from many sides. Yes, I think because the um, SOC typically today are relatively common. You have a small handful of types of uh, interface, how um, they can access the different components. And test and scan insertions, uh, test modes are also relatively standard. And with the um, processor, let's say ARM or other other uh, subsystems, 
the, the um, register map are relatively known as well. So people ha will be able to try to think of a very clever way. I mean, let's, uh, granted, this is not trivial. It is not trivial, and none of the hacking that happens has been trivial. But people are, people are very smart today to be able to find a way. If there's a vulnerability, we have to assume that there's a way that people will find it. So the key thing is to think of, you know, some companies say that we need to think like a hacker, which is a very difficult kind to do, uh, thing to do because as a design and verification engineer, so we want to think of every proper operation will be correct. Hacker, they don't care if the operation is, is proper. They don't care that the access itself is even um, legal. Well, in fact, many times it's not. The mode is not what you, how you use it for. The, the main key is to how to get the information out. So we've been telling people for a long time that they need to understand the software and the software guys need to understand the hardware. Well, the problem is they've done it too well. Yes, um, that's the thing. Um, unfortunately, most of the hardware engineers know the hardware really well. The software engineers know the software, engine, uh, software very well. And hackers typically nowadays know both relatively well. So they know how to get unfair information out from hardware so to help them crack the software. So it's no longer one or the other. They both has to be worked together very well. There's also been a whole thing about trust zones and secure information that you're trying to hide inside that complex SOC. Is complexity in that diagram you've drawn there, is, does that make it harder to hide stuff? Yes, definitely. Trust zone, people can look, um, look at a, a block, very high level block diagram and guess where the trust zone are. They are probably somewhere hidden in the memory site because ultimately it has to go to a memory. Maybe they have a site memories. So trust zone, where it's at, is usually not a mystery anymore. It's to how to access it, that's the mystery. How do you get to the right um, key to, to get access to the, the zone. So um, that's why if there is another alternative path through hardware that doesn't have to go through the proper trust zone area, that, um, that's the easiest way to get access to those data. So is there any way to keep anybody out, or is it always just an ongoing battle? Um, well, we can probably try to find, close some loopholes today, and people will come up with a new idea. So it's always a constant, uh, uh, constant cat and mouse case. However, you know, we want to always try to, the moment the hacker gets ahead, we want to make sure that we close that loop. But even before that, there are several known vulnerability that we, we have today that we don't have good solution. Hardware path, scary path is one of them where many uh, people that we talk to, you know, even though they won't disclose too much because after all it's security, say that this path analysis is still very manual and it's still um, very subjective. You have a bunch of people try to think through and look through the diagram, use some tools to trace paths to try to figure out where else can the path be. So it's by no means <coughs> Um, it's not that systematic, it's definitely not that complete. So that's where, if there is a way to try to identify all possible paths, that's the, all, any po possible path that can access to the secure information, then that will make the process more deterministic and more efficient. Lawrence, thanks for a, a great explanation of what's becoming a very serious problem. My pleasure, Ed.